So hi, Microbe Hunter here and uh, today in this video I'd like uh, to show to you how I 3D printed and how I made this uh, DSLR camera adapter for my microscope over here. And uh, But before I do that, before going to the details on, on the design and construction of this, I'd like to simply explain to you a little bit first why um, it's necessary to have a, yeah, one of these here because there are some commercial adapters also available. And I'd like to explain to you the problem first and, and the, the theoretical background. Now many microscopes uh, that are available these days have a so-called phototube here and those phototubes are very convenient because they allow you to connect uh, a USB microscope camera uh, simply by putting it uh, into the phototube just like this here. Okay, uh, These are so-called eyepiece cameras and this means that you can also put them in here um, in front uh, instead of an eyepiece. It also works. And what those uh, microscope cameras have is, is they have of course a sensor in here and uh, over here at the top there is an optics so so-called reduction optics and uh, those reduction optics are pretty important uh, because uh, the microscope will create a picture approximately one centimeter down into the tube so when it's uh, in focus over here um, through the eyepiece uh, the image will also be projected here in the tube so uh, that's the problem. This uh, place is not accessible um, to the sensor. This is not where the sensor is uh, in this camera because the sensor is in here in the body, right? And what the optics will now do is by inserting it in here, it will pick up the image and it will resize the image so that it will, can project it into the sensor up here. Now there are some um, yeah, other microscope cameras like the one that I have over here that do not have an optics and you see it's significantly smaller okay it's just got the size of an eyepiece and uh, they do not have an optics uh, but if you look carefully here and you might not be able to see this now but uh, the sensor is actually uh, quite far in the front. Okay, it's a, yeah, a very compact design and by inserting this camera now in here um, it will actually as a matter of fact pick up uh, the image right where it is projected. Yeah, so yeah, so this kind of uh, by m making the sensor sufficiently small and by moving it down into the tube, you're essentially, uh, yeah, it's not necessary anymore to have those optics uh, in front. And uh, that's essentially a solution. Um, a second possibility is, is the following, you might not know that, but uh, it is possible to deconnect uh, the reduction optics. Okay, and then what you have over here is a so-called AC mount. And then by uh, removing this top part here of the photo tube, okay, uh, again, not all photo tubes allow you to do that. I'm able to directly connect the camera to the photo tube and then I'm also able to project the image directly to the set on the sensor um, and that's uh, why the distance is, is, is kind of important because I want to make sure that uh, when it's in focus through the eyepieces it also should be in focus on the camera so that is uh, essentially the, the theory behind it now what if I want to uh, connect a DSLR camera um, to my microscope here you have to understand that the sensor um, of the DSLR camera is pretty f yeah, somewhere in the middle over here okay and this means that uh, when the image is projected in here um, yeah then essentially or when the tube is still here connected on top approximately one centimeter down into the tube then this is actually the place where the camera should be located yeah so it actually has to be down like this so that the sensor and the place where the image is projected uh, one centimeter down into the tube is basically at the same place. Um, if I now connect the camera up here somehow by making a, a um, yeah, um, an adapter um, without optics, uh, then the problem is it's not in focus and I have to really uh, strongly defocus uh, the microscope and then I also risk uh, kind of crashing the, the, the optics into the slide and so on and it's not in focus and finding the focus is very difficult. So I think it's, it's really important that both of them are par focal and in focus. But that's the problem now, what I'm going to do, okay, um, yeah, so there is a solution here and it is possible to buy uh, those DSLR camera adapters uh, like those and they have an optics um, in front and um, on the other end over here there is a so-called a T2 adapter ring which is camera specific okay so for Nikon and, and, and for Canon they have different uh, T2 adapter rings and for the mirrorless cameras which are now starting to appear on the market um, you got to check that there is also a T2 adapter ring which they're actually much thicker uh, those for the mirrorless cameras and uh, when you have uh, such a DSLR adapter uh, with optics 
okay and then you're able to connect this of course okay and I have to find now the place and then I'm able to um, see I don't uh, cannot even find it in alignment now okay uh, okay let me see where is this yes here we go yeah um, and when you get it have it connected like this and I'm able to plug it in uh, just like uh, yeah just like a, a regular microscope, uh, microscope camera and the optics will now pick up the image where it's supposed to be where it is and then it will resize the image and then I have um, um, an image that's in focus both in the eyepieces and in the camera uh, that's the theory um, what's the problem with that system? <laughs> the problem is, of course, it's kind of large. And the second problem is, is the following, that because I'm introducing optics here, I'm actually reducing the image quality uh, because it introduces chromatic aberrations and maybe spherical aberrations and the image quality is not quite as sharp. So it, the solution would be now, um, well, why even have an optic? Why not somehow, somehow connect the camera without um, a, yeah, an optical adapter? Why not somehow connect the camera in such a way that the sensor is located there where the image is projected? So I have to kind of move the camera all the way down. Now that would be a cool solution because then the objectives would directly project the image on uh, the camera sensor without any need of any intermediate optics. And this is what I have done. Okay. And the nice thing about this microscope is, is that it allows me to easily deconnect and you see it's already a little bit wobbly. It allows me easily to deconnect this top part here. And yeah, I've got a little uh, hexagonal wrench over here. Um, I simply open it up here and I'm able to completely remove this top part. Okay, and now um, I've replaced this top part with my homemade solution where this is made of uh, yeah, 3D print, printed plastic. The top ring here is a T2 adapter ring, again a camera specific ring. And then all I have to do is, is I have to put it in here. Uh, yeah, I close the, yeah, uh, yeah, I tighten it again and I'm able to directly now connect my camera yeah, two. I again have to find the proper alignment here. Okay, I can again directly connect the camera. Let me switch this, turn this around again. Okay, in such a way that I'm able to take pictures. Okay, um, so this is basically my solution here, and it works surprisingly fine. Yeah, so again. The optics are now responsible for creating the image directly on the sensor and this here, this part here, that's the difficult part now is, is kind of finding the correct distance because if the distance is not correct and it's again not in focus, it's the reason why I added an extra ring here, an extra piece to um, adjust the distance. It was estimated um, and then I kind of, uh, yeah, <laughs> stepwise uh, um, yeah, adjusted the size a little bit so that uh, it's not the correct uh, distance. And this actually uh, has is a very good solution, I think. And uh, the reason is, is because I do not have any intermediate optics. It's a very stable solution and I have a very large field of view. And also the optics, they do not take away any, any light uh, intensity. So I think this is a pretty good solution. And I'm a little bit surprised uh, that considering the solution is so easy, um, the company itself doesn't provide uh, such an adapter. It costs nothing. Uh, instead, what the companies, uh, what you can buy, uh, yeah, you can buy those, uh, those adapters here. Um, which are simply there to you know, convert yeah, yeah, this a follow tube like this to, to um, yeah, in such a way that I'm able to fit a camera on here. Just want to show you also the original solution of the Olympus microscope here. Look at this. <laughs> this is from the, I don't know, <laughs> this is the original solution here. Yeah, there is also a, a, a photo projection eyepiece. Yeah, it, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. And then I can connect the camera on, on top here. I mean, this also has a very good quality because the optics in here, uh, what they do is, is they're so-called compensating optics. Uh, that means they correct the lens error. So the, the quality is pretty good here. Uh, but, but you see, I mean, this is a huge and uh, a bulky solution, right? And, uh, but I would say that, uh, yeah, um, it's much more elegant, I think, and, and easier. And, and I think also yeah, nicer looking if you just have a, a short tube over here, um, yeah, which allows you to directly capture the image um, of the objective, yeah? So not all microscopes are that mod modular however and uh, the one with this the stellar one is, is actually has an advantage but I'm again as I mentioned I'm kind of surprised that considering the fact that it's such an easy solution that they don't just provide this tube yeah um, yeah instead uh, you have uh, this fancy solution over here uh, for microscope cameras uh, yeah um, yeah like like this one over here 
yeah, but what about DSLR cameras? Yeah, so this is a little bit the thing that I just want to, to clarify here. And um, I'm now going to show you a little bit of how I have 3D printed this. But if you have got a CNC machine somewhere, uh, it's uh, you can do that, uh, make that out of aluminum, or for example, if you, I don't know, maybe you can use heavy duty cardboard and, and, and do something like that um, as well. And yeah, that, that's basically it. The just another thing, I'm just going to take it off here. Um, Again, I need to yeah, loosen it a little bit here. Here we go. Um, the only thing is, is that um, the T2 adapter ring, what I've done here, I'm not gonna use this one over here, but I'm going to use uh, the other T2 adapter ring. Okay, simply to show it to you. The T2 adapter ring that I have here has another ring in here, uh, which allows it, uh, which uh, allows it to be connected to, to another adapter. And what I've done is, is I've simply removed this inner ring here because there are some screws that allow you to remove it. And instead of this inner ring here, I, I then um, connected, uh, yeah, the 3D printed, yeah, tube. Yeah. So this is basically all I've done. It was a pretty fairly straightforward uh, solution. I'm going to show you now how I've done that. I used uh, a free uh, online web application called Tinkercad to design the adapter um, and I designed it in several pieces. So this here is the main tube and uh, yeah, I'm just looking around here a little bit to show it to you. And then the bottom part I printed separately uh, because uh, it's easier to print this way and uh, it also gives me a little bit of flexibility in case I want to reprint something. I don't have to print everything in again because the printing time was uh, quite uh, quite long. So yeah, here here too I made different parts and then ultimately I also assembled it. And this is now the, the bottom part uh, yeah, of uh, the DSLR adapter which goes into the microscope. And uh, yeah, then I started uh, to 3D print it and uh, this uh, took uh, quite a long time, uh, several hours, and I used 100% infill, so it's solid plastic. So I just want uh, to show you now the parts uh, of the adapter. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's several parts here. I decided to 3D print the parts separately because it's uh, for easier printing. This part here is uh, the part that actually connects into uh, the microscope. And uh, yeah, here you're, you can see that there, yeah, it's able you can you can rotate this so there is a little hexagonal screw that goes in here and uh, then the top part can also rotate and without the whole thing coming off um, this here is the main part um, and uh, what I've got here is a little uh, ring as well which I added later because I found out that the distance here is too short uh, so the camera was a little bit out of focus so I decided to instead of printing everything again I simply decided to add uh, this uh, additional spacer ring so when you uh, want to make uh, this yourself then I suggest yeah, that you simply print everything in, in one piece okay and uh, over here this is of course uh, it, everything goes together here and I'm using three screws here to held, hold everything together because uh, for ease of printing now I simply place the screws anywhere here so I have to see that I'm actually able to uh, I hope that this was the right one I have to then put everything back uh, so I drilled a few holes uh, and uh, yeah that, that that's pretty straightforward okay yeah, it goes in in here. Now the other side um, of uh, the tube here, you see it's a little bit thicker than the rest and I made it so that it fits better into the T2 adapter ring but uh, what I should have done is, is I probably should have uh, printed everything a little bit thicker Yeah, then it's not necessary to have this little rim here. So uh, how do I fit it into the T2 adapter ring? And uh, this is uh, of course uh, the one that is uh, camera specific uh, and uh, you have to make sure that uh, those T2 adapter rings actually also exist for your camera because uh, some for some camera models they might be difficult to obtain. But uh, these are not microscope specific. Uh, people who have telescopes for example they also use them. Yeah. So what do you do now is the following. You take a little uh, yeah, tool here and you open uh, you loosen the three screws to remove um, this inside ring here okay this here I, I don't need that okay um, yeah because there is a threading here which um, is not needed and uh, then I'm able to directly uh, connect uh, this part uh, over here uh, to the tube and uh, then you, all you have to do is you have to tighten it again and we're, we're ready to go okay uh, so here, the three of the three screws here, and uh, that's it. Yeah. So here again, and um, on the other side, um, I have to of course connect uh, the 
yeah, I have to connect, of course, uh, the part here. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm not going to show this to you now because this does take time and I have a problem finding the holes again. <laughs> here it is. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is correct. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So, and uh, I'm quite happy with the adapter because it's uh, quite stable and uh, the image quality is, is quite good, of course, because I am avoiding uh, any intermediate optics. Yes, yeah, so I took it apart again because I actually wanted to show you the size here, okay? Um, so this here is, uh, what, 43, uh, about 43 millimeters. Okay, I don't know if you're able to see it here. That's about 43 millimeters here. Um, yeah, this part down here is 38 millimeters. And uh, this top part here is 52 millimeters okay and the overall length of the adapter is uh, 52 millimeters okay as well yeah so and that's basically uh, that's basically the solution that I recommend and uh, if you have some kind of a CNC machine then you might actually make this out of aluminum in one piece and I think uh, that maybe might look even a little bit better but then again I mean it works quite well. Yeah, I think uh, I just also wanted to show you now uh, some of the pictures that I have uh, taken using the system. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of satisfied. Yeah, this here is uh, the a, a thistle, which is a plant. There are some plant fibers. I some time ago I made a permanent mount, which I just wanted to show you. So the sample specimen is rather arbitrary. I'm going up now with the magnification, but I think uh, the thing that you can see is, is that the image quality is pretty good. Um, there are not so many internal reflections. I think the contrast is fine. And this here is another permanent mount. It's a cross section of the, a stem of a plant. We can see the individual cells here, and when we zoom in. Yeah, we can see quite nicely here um, the individual cells. So I'm quite satisfied and especially like the large field of view. So I'm not getting a lot of empty magnification here. And uh, the image quality is fine. So this adapter is actually uh, quite uh, quite useful and functioning. And uh, I can highly recommend that you also try it. Yeah, so that's it. I hope you uh, liked it. I hope it was informative for you. Um, yeah, that's all I can show you today. Happy micro hunting as always. And see you around next time. Bye-bye.